Okay, well, uh, so since the committee's available and ready, and there's no time like the present, I'd like to go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, first of all, I do want to welcome, uh, you know, the, the public, uh, those people who've uh, supported Justin in, in his uh, studies. Um, and also we have uh, Josie, Justin's mom, on the line as well. Uh, so uh, she is from the Philippines uh, or in the Philippines, so that's great. Um, I do want to introduce uh, Justin briefly and then go over kind of ground rules for the defense. And then I'm going to turn off my video. Um, so uh, I've known Justin now, I think, for three or even maybe even four years. Um, he did undergraduate uh, research work for me in extrusion, uh, looking at surging and um, processing of nylons and other materials uh, having to do with screw design. Um, he also worked on his capstone uh, design for me. Uh, with me, and that had to do with variation in 3D printing. Um, and now he's uh, doing his master's defense. It's been a real pleasure uh, to work with Justin these last few years. I'm impressed by his dedication, uh, his intelligence, and his hard work. Uh, really impressive stuff. Um, in terms of the ground rules, I would suggest that uh, the public hold their questions. Um, the committee members, you know, if you can remember your questions till the end, that's great. But if you need a clarification or do have a burning question, please do feel free uh, to, you know, pause the presentation and, and uh, we'll have Justin address any questions at that time. Um, afterwards, we will take questions from uh, the public and the committee, and we reserve the right to have a private uh, kind of question period if, if it's needed. So with that, Justin, I turn over the floor to you. Thank you very much. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, Professor Kazmir. So I'll try my best to make this short and see. And so um, this is the day I'll be presenting you my thesis on encapsulation of flexible electronics. And just some background behind this. This is basically work um, Professor Kazmir and I, along with the UML NextFlex team who are present here today, um, have been doing for the past year or so. And so just to give you a brief agenda or a brief overview of what I'll be talking to you about today, um, we basically chunked up the whole thesis into three main analyses. Uh, the first one would be your thermal analysis, where we try to characterize the whole compression molding process that I'll be discussing. The second one would be the squeezing flow analysis, where we have um, a study on your deformation of the encapsulant sheet layers. And finally, your lamination, where we studied the strength of these bonds of the encapsulant sheets. So without further ado, um, let's just do some homeroom. What is a flexible electronic per se? Um, flexible electronics is known, um, we've defined it in the scientific community in many different ways, but one good definition is from the National Academy of Sciences, and they basically say that these are circuits that can be bended, curved, or elongated. And basically that means that you can conform it into um, a different shape that you may want. And so why are we even doing this encapsulation study? Um, it's mainly due to this um, problem where you have this device performance um, or basically um, it's not as good as mature and rigid consumer electronics such as silicon wafers. So that's why there's a lot of um, need to increase the efficiency of flexible electronics per se today. And so what we aim to do with this thesis and the research work we did with uh, UML, the UML NextFlex team is basically to support um, the scalability, mass production, substrate dependability, and facilitate product innovation or basically faster time to market with our work here. Um, for this work in particular, I'm trying to improve the protection and longe longevity of these devices or flexible electronics through um, creating an encapsulation layer for the flexible electronic. And so on that note, um, there are three main ways to do encapsulation. Um, the first way would be through a rigid encapsulation method where you have a glass or metal lid. The second method would be through a flexible or barrier foil encapsulation where you have uh, where people use very thin um, metals or thin glass to um, create an encapsulant layer. Um, both of these have a commonality in that they use adhesives or sealant to create that hermetic packaging that we need for an encapsulation, um, flex encapsulated flexible electronic. For this thesis, um, I'll be focusing on the third um, main point, which is your thin film polymers, where you use, again, thin films to create your hermetic packaging for your flexible electronic. And so we achieve your thin film polymer encapsulation through compression molding. 
I know that um, my colleagues here at UMass Law also did spray and dye coating, but for um, our part, uh, Professor Kazmi and I, we focused on compression molding and processing these um, thin polymer films um, to this um, process. So as we know, compression molding is simply uh, a very common process in processing thermosets and thermoplastics, and it typically involves um, four steps. The first one would be to simply heat your platens up to a certain temperature. Um, in a normal compression molding process, you have something like a mold, but in our case, we use this thing called a sandwich, which is composed of your laminating plates made out of aluminum, or your rubber silicone cushions, which uh, have the aim to reduce the compression forces experienced by the chips. And then, of course, your encapsulant layer and your flexible electronic device. Um, again, if you go uh, further down, you have your compression, which is basically where you laminate and then you uh, basically eject your sandwich and get your flexible or encapsulated flexible electronic. And so moving on to the first uh, main analysis that we did, which is the thermal analysis. So instead of doing um, a trial banded um, trial and error approach, we wanted to basically be more, be like more scientific, scientific about it and approach it in a model based approach where we basically created a finite element and uh, we used a finite element software to um, predict what would happen on the different parameters and conditions that we would use in a compression uh, molding process to encapsulate these flexible electronics. And so what you can see here in the slide is your compression model, which is basically a reduced model um, of the whole compression mold. Um, we assume, again, the platens, um, which is at the top and bottom layers, and your sandwich, sandwich structure at the middle. Um, beside it is the different material properties um, obtained from the database of the finite element analysis software. I believe it was from the Granta Design database. On the subsequent side, this is, which is basically your simulation setup, um, Something that we noticed while studying the whole um, compression molding process as a, as a whole is that you can actually chunk it up into uh, five major stages. Uh, the first two stages actually have the purpose of simply bringing up your sandwich structure to up to temperature or to the set point that you want. Um, with this said, um, this is a very important stage because this is where uh, dwell time or your polymer typically flows. And because of this, you have this thermal uh, effect of thermal expansion. And because of thermal expansion, we notice that um, your sandwich structure actually causes this pressure overshoot in your compression molding process. In order to counteract this process variation, we added something called bump events, as you can see, uh, that is basically boxed in the rectangular um, section at this uh, table. And what a bump event is basically, um, we're basically telling the machine to slightly open for around a second or less than a second in order to get to equilibrate and basically decompress and ensure that um, constant pressure or the clamp force that we're setting it upon is um, again, constant. In the subsequent steps, stages three and four, this is now where we bump up the pressure. Uh, we bumped it up to 4,000 pounds or 1,814 kilograms. And this is where we want to ensure lamination occurred or basically we have the Jackson layers being compressed. Um, and finally, Stage number five is simply uh, injecting it at room temperature. And so here we have um, some interesting results uh, from our finite element analysis. Um, I just want to point out initially something that we noticed was um, once we insert that sandwich into our compression molding machine, it would only conductively heat at the bottom portion. And so we were actually not heating it at the top portion. And so we also included that and considered that in our model. Moreover, in terms of our bump events, we can see that around 424 seconds, um, you see this slide, um, again, it turns into green because um, we kind of uh, assumed that it was turned off. And so that's how we kind of model um, these bump events. And finally, the more and more, more important thing is basically you can see that cooling profile where it slowly um, goes from your set temperature to your room temperature. Um, to further visualize this, this is basically the same results as the previous slide, but we omitted the top portion of our um, reduced model. And so you can see, again, the same um, different effects and different uh, model assumptions, such as your um, patterns, uh, such as your sandwich structure only being heated at the bottom portion, your bump events, and your, um, basically your slow cooling profile all throughout. And so um, those pictures might be nice, but 
um, again, as engineers, this is what we really uh, love and do, which is, which is graphs. And so these are the graphs that were inputted from the finite element software. So the top left is your transit thermal model. What we're most interested in here is the green trace, which is your substrate temperature. That's basically your sandwich temperature. Beside it is an experimental run. Um, this is where you're um, where we added an uh, intrusive thermocouple, I believe it's a thermo, uh, type J thermocouple, where we would basically measure um, the temperature inside that sandwich structure. And so once you superimpose or put these two graphs on top of each other, um, you see this type of um, somewhat good fidelity between where you do see this um, initial onset of this hill type. <laughs> when, once we heat the platens, you actually see this model respond. So, um, suggesting that our models do somewhat roughly approximate um, the actual experimental run. Um, another important thing to note once we superimpose it is that um, we see a slight decrease in temperature after the bump events, and that's also um, observed in both our transit thermal models and our experimental run. However, it's interesting to note that our transit thermal models show a linear decrease in temperature while our experimental runs kind of show this concave like or this curvature. And so we were not able to model that. And so um, of course, being engineers, we want to improve and make these guys more efficient. And so we also did that. And so here is an example of our models being tuned or, or, or the models being refined. What we did was add different contacts and we slightly, slightly modified the different tapping keeping times. And the results of this um, tuned model is on your top left. Uh, what you can see here is similarly the substrate temperature, um, which is basically your sandwich um, temperature that we're more interested in. And once you basically compare it to the previous model presented in the previous slide, you can see that um, as observed in the actual experimental run, um, it was not as you don't see a bigger protrusion in terms of um, a lower temperature in the onset, where that is what is actually happening. So it's less pronounced per se. And you also see the same effect or model after the bump events. However, um, in terms of the uh, cooling profiles at the end, you don't see that, you, you still couldn't model that curvature or that concave-like um, temperature profile. So um, that is slight of a bit of a problem. However, um, that is to be um, expected. <laughs> and so um, what I can take away from this is that even though these models were not the most accurate, they give good approximations and good uh, predictions on whether a certain compression molding process or processing conditions and parameters may or may not work for our flexible electronic encapsulation. Um, on the third chapter, this is where we now study uh, the deformation of our encapsulant sheets through a squeezing flow analysis. So um, just a quick overview of polymer processing here. Um, that I learned from my professors at UMass Law. And so, as we know, your polymers are basically governed during these um, solid to melt stage during processing. And this is basically your dwell time, or your, um, where your, uh, that would be stage one and two. And this is where you have your thermal expansion, your polymers start to wiggle and flow. And so this is basically where, what determines the product and the quality of your final product per se. That would be easier to explain to the layman here today. Um, and so we basically, in order to quantify deformation, we basically did a squeezing flow analysis for this. Um, in order to get an accurate squeezing flow analysis, um, we wanted to see the pressure estimations and how much pressure uh, the sheet incurred along with the uh, different um, individual trips. And we did this by uh, basically placing, again, that same um, sandwich structure minus the um, encapsulant sheets and encapsulant layers. And we tested at different pressures and different temperatures, and then measured the thickness at three locations. And because of this, you can kind of um, estimate the strain and find the modulus, as you can see, that is tabulated in this table. Um, one thing that I would want to show is this graph. This, um, it might look irrelevant, but it's actually a very important graph um, on the left side. It shows that at a higher temperature, um, your rubber actually or this rubber silicone acts stiffer. And so that is something that we accounted for in our um, analysis. Um, in terms of finding uh, estimated pressure, um, we considered the average sheet pressure, which is basically the uh, clamp force that we um, introduce or set. 
over your initial sheet area. Um, the next um, consideration in order to get your estimated pressure was your local sheet pressure, which is what um, the, the amount of pressure each chip or the amount of pressure that the chips experience. And that can be basically estimated by finding the strain of the silicone multiplied by the value that we got from your silicone modulus characterization. So now to get to the more fun part of the um, analysis, which is basically actual runs. Um, the first two runs were the scoping trials per se. Um, test number one was um, done at extreme high, high, high temperatures and high pressures. So we wanted to see what would happen at these conditions. Meanwhile, we did the opposite of test number two where we did it at very low temperatures and at low pressures. Um, in test number three, four, and five, this is where we added the different conditions, um, such as in test three, we added uh, another substrate, a polyamide substrate, uh, commonly known as Kapton by the industry. In test number four, we now added test chips in order to simulate, quote unquote, a flexible electronic. And in test number five, we introduced this idea called spacer layers, which is basically um, your substrate being cut um, into uh, basically according to the chip size that you want so that uh, we would basically have a more flush or equal thickness or stack thickness overall. And so I'm um, showing you the results of our analysis here in test number one. Um, you see that again, at higher temperatures or the higher pressures, of course, you're basically inducing a lot of polymer flow. And you see this again, being represented in our contour plots here. You see a lot of deformation at the lower portion. And again, it's also indicated by the estimated peak pressures. So what this um, test basically says is that our contour plots can characterize a lot of deformation. And so that's very promising. In test number two, um, the complete opposite is basically saying that we're doing um, less, def uh, less, less pressure and less temperature. So in essence, we should not see a lot of deformation. And that is what happened. And so as you can see, your initial thickness and your final thickness, there isn't much difference in your contour plots. Um, meanwhile, in terms of your sheet thinning and sheet strain, again, you didn't see a lot of um, changes there. However, I'd like to point out um, this processing, if, if, if it looks familiar to you, that's from a um, similar um, graph from your um, previous analysis, your thermal analysis. You see this um, a lot, this, this black line, which is your black trace, which is uh, showing like a hacksaw or a soft use variation. That basically means your pressure variations, and that's something we don't want to have in our process because that would basically mean process instabilities, meaning that we're not really um, having the exact um, sets of temperatures and pressures that we have in our process. So that's something to be concerned of. Uh, moving to on to the actual studies uh, and away from the scoping trials. Um, test number three, this is now where we added the polyamide or the Kaplan substrate. What you can see here is that um, Initially, we didn't notice this, but once we characterized it, there was actually a stark difference in thicknesses between your polyester and your polyamide substrates. And that you can see in your initial stack thickness. Um, and that also translated to the amount of pressure your polyamide um, substrate received versus your polyester substrate. And so you can see that um, according to our analysis, um, because the polyester side was more thicker, there was more deformation on this side in comparison to the polyester side. Um, in test number four, this is now where we added the different microchips. Um, I believe we added core ceramic chips. Um, we also interestingly added a connector and an LED light in the polyamide side, which is indicated by the red boxes. And so what we see here is that there's actually a pressure concentration among these chip locations. And so because of this pressure concentration, we see a lot of deformation in sheet thinning and sheet strain at these points. Um, it's interesting to note, um, maybe just slightly going back to the process in terms of processing data, we see that we still see that hacksaw or sawtooth variation. So um, that might be something to be noted um, whenever um, one would process such flexible electronics. In test number five, in order to, um, we basically wanted to ameliorate or fix the problems, um, which is basically that pressure concentration in the chips. And to do that, we added, again, these spacer layers, the concept of spacer layers. And what we see here is that we actually see better pressure distribution and we see less sheet thinning, sheet thinning and deformation. So 
it's actually very promising and something um, we would have to further study or characterize. So it's, I think it's also important to just emphasize uh, what I just said a few seconds ago, that the addition of spacer layers um, in terms of and the relationship to the estimated peak pressure, what you can see on the left graph, which is test number four, um, you can see that you see this um, pressure concentration on the polyamide side. And so, of course, um, that would interestingly um, cause a lot of um, non-uniform film thicknesses, which is a lot of concern in comparison to test number five, where you have a more uniform pressure distribution. So that is something to be, um, that is somewhat of an indicator of how well your process is. And so um, we're almost done. <laughs> so here we have the lamination study or your healing models. Um, here we wanted to basically characterize the strength of the polymer to polymer interfaces, basically how strong the bonds um, between our encapsulant sheets um, in order to um, basically protect these flexible electronics. And we use two theories, um, the microscopic theory, which is basically based upon your polymer chain behavior. It's uh, derived from your rotation theory. Um, to put it simply, it's further described in the thesis. Um, the macroscopic theory, where, where um, this is where we describe the bulk properties during welding. And so um, just to quickly go over this, I want to point out the stages of healing you can see at the lower left-hand side. And so in polymer theory, um, we know that once you heat these polymers or plastics up above your glass transition temperature at a certain temperature, we know that they start to somewhat flow or um, melt per se. And so you have this um, wetting or initial sur surface contact. And after that, you have this diffusion where polymers start to entangle or attach to one another. And after a certain amount of time, you have this complete randomization where basically you can't distinguish whether um, one one um, one sheet is the other. And so why are we so interested about this quote unquote healing? Well, it's because of this um, position where if your healing time is greater than your reputation time, based on the equivalent diffusion coefficient, then the strength is equal to your virgin, virgin maximum strength. And that basically means that um, if you increase your healing time, you know, you basically achieve your theoretical limit or the maximum amount of strength that your um, polymer to polymer interfaces might um, experience or have. And so our objective in this, um, in this part of the thesis was basically to find the simplest model for predicting this healing time. Um, so gathering around the internet, um, this is where it gets um, a bit spicy and a bit confusing per se, but um, gathering around different researches and papers around the internet, we found that intrinsic viscosity is a good indicator of um, your molecular rotation and basically your healing. And so one simple model of viscosity would be your williams landau ferry and the cross WLF model, which is based on your time temperature superposition. And that basically means your polymer's viscosity is a function of your temperature and your shear rate. And so what you can see in that uh, equation, on the equation on your top right, that's basically um, the William the cross WLF equation, and below it are um, the different um, fitted parameters. So these guys are not random values. Um, these were parameters um, taken from Professor Casimir's injection molding um, book, where um, he used um, a polyester. Um, I believe it was Eastman Eastapak, which is a polyester packaging grade, in order to um, maybe model uh, the polymer the polymer encapsulant sheets that we're studying today. So you can see again, you see the glass transition temperature, the power law, um, uh, power law value, and your uh, critical shear stress. And so what you can see on the left hand side of that graph is that again your polymers are temperature dependent, and you see this um, again at the higher, as we know, um, basically think about it, at a lower temperature your polymers tend to be more viscous or they flow less. Um, once you have, but once you heat it up they tend to flow more. And so how do we actually explain this um, phenomenon or characteristic? We do this through something called a time temperature shift factor where we now have one line or one curvature of the whole um, polymer viscosity, for, uh, the, the polymer where we now can somewhat, um, uh, if I were to explain this, now we can somewhat compare the different um, polymers viscosity at different temperatures. And so we chose 
um, the minimum injection molding temperature of polyester, which was um, as a reference temperature, uh, viscosity reference temperature of 270 degrees. And again, using the data from the previous slide, um, we were able to produce the graph on the lower left-hand side of the corner. And because of this, um, according to research, uh, we were able to basically um, find that, again, your interfacial strength is basically a quarter power, power to your healing time over your rotation time. And so that is how we got the graph on the right-hand side or below the um, equation above. And what you can see um, is basically at a higher temperature, um, you see that it actually heals faster or comes to mat full material strength at 220 degrees versus 200 or 180 degrees Celsius. And that at a longer lamination time, you will eventually reach this quote unquote uh, full strength or full material strength. And so um, now going to our models, um, this is basically the scoping trials that I discussed in chapter three. And what you can see is test number one. If I were to give you the sheet right now, um, you can actually punch through it and you can poke holes through it. And it's interesting that the model predicted this where in the middle portion of that sheet, there was a lot of thinning. And it actually didn't heal or wasn't very good at all. Um, in terms of, the, uh, and again, this was because we did it at a very high temperature and large pressure. And of course, um, this caused a lot of deformation. And so at the deformed sheet, there was actually bad healing at the middle. Um, in terms of test two, where we did it at a lower temperature and a lower pressure, we see a lot of healing. So that is a very interesting result that might help us in considering future studies and trial runs. Um, going to the different conditions and different parameters that we um, induce in our um, uh, basically in our study, test number three, um, we saw again, which I mentioned, this um, difference in thickness of thickness where. Um, the initial thickness in the polyamide side was, or the Kapton side was a lot thinner, basically thinner than your polyester side. And what we can see is that the model predicted that there was less healing in this section. Um, in test number four, you can see that once you actually bump up the temperature, regardless of whether you have microchips in it, the model actually says that it fully healed. So that's very interesting to you know. Um, in test five, the one with the spacer layers, you see um, the model predicts that in these chip locations, you really have um, good healing, which is again important because that indicates your flexible electronic or your flexible encapsulant uh, electronic was able to be encapsulated by your polyester films. However, it's interesting to note that the model um, kind of said that there was no healing above um, the above portion of your polyester, uh, sorry, polyamide side. And, that's a bit concerning per se. And so um, what's the point in all this theory work if you don't actually have actual results and observations? And so what we did was create a modified test protocol where um, we basically took out and specified the polyamide section and basically cut and sized and separated it. Um, first, we punched it um, to create a hole in which we can now attach it to a mechanical weighing scale. And then, to the best of my abilities, I pulled it at a constant rate, per se, in order to find a rough estimate of the amount of field strength. Uh, another thing that we also did was um, we characterized it through different failure modes. Uh, the first failure mode that I suggested was the rip, where you have failure at the flaps, then your tear, which is basically your um, your uh, flexible electronic or this this um, adhesive. Um, adhesive part uh, tearing or splitting in two, you also finally have your fully peed where you have full delamination. And th that basically means that you can fully separate the two encapsulant or the two polyester sheets. So here are the results of that um, rough mechanical test. What you can see is in test number three, um, this is where you don't have um, the microchips. And you can see as predicted, um, because there should be less deformation in this um, test, you shouldn't have a lot of um, strength reductions. And that is why it is the strongest test. In test number four, this is where we now added the different microchips. And you see this um, large decrease in strength. And so again, that's around 13.7 newtons, newtons. And so you see this huge decrease in strength when once we added the chips. And in order to fix this problem, we added 
this thing called spacer layers, which again is sort of the cutouts of the substrates in order to have a more uniform film thickness and uniform um, pressure distribution. And that worked wonders because it basically retained or made it comparable to the test number three, which was without the, oh, without microchips. And so that's a very promising result. And so just to finally wrap up everything, um, what we did in the uh, second chapter, we basically created different models which would approximate your thermal behavior of the process, your whole compression molding um, uh, process. And so what these models kind of help us do is predict and give us, instead of doing that trial up, bounded trial and error, you can now say, oh, this would not work and basically not waste our time in even, even trying that trial. Um, the next one would be doing this deformation analysis to a squeeze flow, ana uh, to a squeeze flow analysis. And this is where we wanted to basically compare the different um, parameters and processing conditions that we induce with our flexible electronic and possible ways to maybe um, have that uniform thickness and uniform pressure distribution. And that was done through the addition of spacers, bump events, and maybe processing it at a lower temperature or near its crystal peak melting point. And finally, we did um, the healing models, which sparingly inferred your polymer to polymer interfaces or, strong, or the strength of the bonds. And we did um, some corroboration with observational results or experimental results. So just some recommendations to cap it all off. Um, something that, again, that was mentioned in the second chapter, if, <laughs> if everyone still recalls that, um, we could not heat up the upper portion of the platen, or, or of the upper portion of the sandwich structure, and that was because um, our automatic compression molder um, had a minimum um, compression of around a thousand pounds, so we couldn't go beyond that um, below. So if we were able to somewhat just even have it touch um, amongst each other, maybe we could have um, fix that thermal expansion being experienced at stage number one and stage number two that would have given us a better um, process stability and basically a better overall uniform film thickness. Um, the next thing that we did was a finite element analysis where, of course, you could have added um, one major concern was what about the structural um, what about the structural aspect experienced by the sandwich structure? So we could have also added that into our analysis. Uh, furthermore, we kind of added more data points and thickness measurements to better characterize that deformation or that sheet thinning and sheet strain. And finally, the obvious one, um, we kind of just followed a standard test protocol or followed an ASTM method um, for the PO strength test rather than using a mechanical weighing scale, per se. And so, um, just again, to end it all, I'd just like to thank the Nextflex Consortium um, Dr. Stoso and his colleague Wayne Shi from Eastman Chemicals, uh, Dr. Oit Wall and the other Nextflex staff, uh, the other Nextflex staff, um, who basically allowed me to present today. So I'm very grateful for their um, approval today. And of course, my beloved colleagues and faculty at UMass Lowell, from Professor David Casimir, Professor Joey Mead, and Professor Bridget Budlaw, and Professor Davide Masato, who I believe is here today, who actually taught me how to use um, that finite element analysis. Uh, the UML Nextflex team, Professor Aaron Kini, Michelle Gomez, um, Avi Abar, and Krishna Jaju, and my friends, uh, Varun Dinur, Austin Colon, Sidan Hoyer, and Fabian Ulrich. And finally, um, they somewhat helped me write the thesis by giving me good examples of what a thesis should be, um, Dr. Coogan and C. Tom Leclerc. Of course, all of my family, friends, and former educators who support me all, who have supported me through the ups and downs in life and all throughout. And thank you very much. So, I hope there are any good questions. Everybody's <laughs> muted, but... <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, yes. well, well done. done. Well, well done, done, well done, done uh, 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 Justin. Justin. Very, very nice. nice. Uh, so, so cool, 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 cool. There you go. There you go. Nice. nice. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I hit the button. The button. Does, does, <laughs> Does, Does the committee, committee want to start, start with, with questions, questions or should we start, start with, with the public? The public. Um, we, we can start. start. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Mike, Mike, go, ahead. go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, Joey, Joey, do you, you want to start? start? No, I'm trying to think how to, how ask, to ask the question. The question. Okay. okay. So, so I, I, have one, one, but I have a lot of questions, and I'll try to keep it to the most important ones. I made comments. On your, on your thesis, thesis and, and I will, I will 
uh, uh, scan, scan these and send to you. you. Um, so, so just, just, just uh, first, uh, first, first of all, uh, really, uh, really excellent, excellent work, work Justin. Justin. Uh, even, uh, though even though I was, I was intimately, intimately involved, involved in this project, in this project uh, uh, I, it, just it just blows me away how, how, how uh, detailed, detailed your, your analysis, analysis of the data, the data was, was, and, and uh, I, I, really I really appreciate it. it. Um, if you, if can, you go can go to uh, the slide on the reputation model, model, your schematic, schematic. for lamination, yeah, correct. correct. So, so uh, uh, I, know I know you call, you call this, this the stages, stages of healing, healing and Richard, Richard Wool, Wool, I guess, guess their theory, their theory on, 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 on healing, healing had, had to do, to do with, 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 with an, an initial, initial crack. crack. And so, and you, so had you had to, to heal, heal to, repair. to repair. But in but your in case, case you, you do not, do not have, have rupture, rupture, right? right? You are, you are, you are uh, encapsulating, encapsulating or compressing these two uh, dissimilar, dissimilar polymers. polymers. And, so and so my recommendation, my recommendation is, is, you know, if you, know, you, if you were going to incorporate, to incorporate this as part, part of your, your, um, your model, model, instead, instead of, calling of calling it healing, healing I, would I would call it something, something like, like, I don't know, I don't know polymer, polymer interchain, interchain entanglement, entanglement, right? Because, because that's, exactly that's exactly what stage, stage four, four is, is where, where you have, have the maximum, maximum contact, contact points, 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 the maximum uh, entanglements, entanglements of, of uh, the, uh, the two, two dissimilar, dissimilar polymers, polymers will, will give you the maximum, maximum lamination of field strength, strength, correct? correct? correct. Okay. And so, uh, so, 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 that's so that's just one, one recommendation. recommendation. I had a I had couple, couple questions, questions about, about um, your, your use of the of WLF, the WLF uh, for helping you to model, to model the viscosity, viscosity behavior. behavior. So let's, so let's, let's, let's go, go to that. To that. Okay. okay. So in okay. principle, this, this data, data uh, you used, you, you, the, 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 the theoretical, theoretical parameters, parameters are, are from the literature, literature. Polyester. polyester, correct? correct. And so, and so um, um, you are, you are e, 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 but, 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 but your, your trials, trials also, also involve, involve polyimid, poly poly correct? correct? So did you do a similar, similar study, study for, 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 for the capton, capton? Um, using, using, using theoretical, theoretical values, values for polyimid? For polyimid? Um, no, we did not. Um, my understanding on why we only used um, the polyester is because we were mainly just focusing on the polyester film. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the polyimid, polyimid thing is incompatible with melt. Because we're, we're below its, its melting, melting point. point. Oh, oh, what is, what is, the, what is, the, what is the, the melting, melting temperature? temperature? Well, we're, we're, not, yeah, we're, we're not considering, considering the, the, the healing of the, the polyamide to the extent for that, that reason. reason. Okay. So, so we, I, should I should ignore, ignore the polyamide. Poly anything anything that's having, having to do with the polyamide, poly correct? correct? Because, because you're, you're, you're much below, below the, 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 the melting, melting point. point. Okay. And just to be clear, your... Compression, compression temperature, temperature is, is 207, 207 degrees C. Um, we did it at different temperatures. Professor. Okay. 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 But, at but at all times, times you're, you're above, above the melting, the melting temperature, temperature for the, the copolyester. Co yes, except for um, one of the correct trials. Oh, yes, except for one doping trials where we did it. Justin. Yeah, my professor. Oh, except for one of the trials where we did it at 204. Okay. okay, okay, so so, so you're, you're always, always above, above the melting, the melting temperature. temperature. Yes. Okay. okay, all right. All right. So, so uh, if we if go, we to, go test to test one and test, test two, two uh, these are estimations, estimations of healing based on, on uh, strength prediction as a function, as a function of lamination, of lamination time, time, correct? correct? Yes? Yes, sorry, yes. Okay, okay. Very, good. very good. So, so uh, uh, it's, it's interesting, interesting to me that, me that uh, uh, the, the model, model shows thinning. This is polyester, polyester in, the in the middle. middle. Right? right. Mm -hmm. now, now, if you, if you go, go back, back to, to the strength, strength prediction, prediction plot, plot, yes, so, 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 this, so this right, right plot, plot here, here, 
and you and told, you told me, me test, test one, one you're, you're operating, operating at, at 204, 204 right, right. And, and high, high pressure, pressure. Correct? Um, no, um, in test one, Professor, we did it at, three, uh, at high temperature, so we did it at 218 uh, degrees Celsius. Um, the test two was done at 204. Okay, okay. So, in so in principle, principle given, given the, the temperature, temperature and, and time, time, you should, you should achieve the maximum, the maximum strength, strength or virgin, or virgin strength, strength, right? right? So, 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 so what, is, what accounting? is accounting? I guess, I guess what, I'm what I'm asking is, is could, could you explain... You explain the next, the next slide. slide. The, the the difference, difference in the gradient, the gradient in, the in the thickness profile. profile. If, you're if you're saying, saying that, that you, you control temperature, temperature, you can you control, control pressure, pressure, and, and the, the lamination, lamination force, force. Why, why is there thinning, thinning in, the in the middle? Why is why there dissimilar uh, thicknesses? Um, well, I don't know if this is um, even. Um, Right to say, Professor, but I noticed that again, there was like degradation of the material, like it kind of degraded at that point because we put it, I think, a bit too long. So I don't know if that's something that's right to say. And that's why we experienced this type of a lot of thing. Or I don't know if that, if the, um, <laughs> if we, if we did the model correctly per se. Um, so that's what I understood from, um, how we modeled it. So, so in, pr in, principle, in principle, you're looking, you're looking for, for uh, deformation, deformation, but not, but not flow. flow. So you're walking, walking a, 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 a narrow, narrow line. line. Is that Is correct? That correct? Um, yes. I, I think I could say that. Okay. okay. So then, so then maybe, maybe in this, in region, this region, you're getting, you're getting flow, flow, right? right? Uh, uh, completely. completely. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, so so that, that, I'm just, I'm trying, just trying to, to understand, understand uh, uh, how your model helps, helps you, predict you predict or at least, or at least explain, explain your experimental, experimental results. results. So, so actually, actually test, test two, two in principle, in principle is, perfect, is perfect. Right? right? Okay. okay. So, then so then test, test three is test two parameters, parameters except, except with, with one side. side Having, having the polyester, the polyester and, and the other, other side, side having, having the capton, capton correct? correct? Um, no, test three was uh, at a slightly higher temperature, Professor. Okay. 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 So, so assuming, assuming I'm, I'm, I'm going to ignore, ignore the poly, the poly image, image because we're, we're not, not above. above. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So, so test three actually shows good, good healing. healing. And, and you, you would argue, argue that, that test four also shows good healing, except for... Where, where the, the term couple, couple is, is being inserted, inserted over, over, on, on the left-hand left side, side, correct? correct. Now, uh, the, 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 when, when you, when you test, test five, five, when, when you, you start, start putting, putting in the spacers, the spacers I, just I just want to understand, understand what you mean by spacers, spacers right? right? So, so you, have have you have the chips, and you have the sheet, sheet trying, trying to compress, compress around the spacers. The spacers. And, and so those... Touch, touch points, points, if you will, will are regions, regions of higher, higher, higher force, force or higher so pressure, pressure, and so you, so you have, have ripping, ripping, right? And, and so uh, differences, differences in the film thickness. thickness. Now, now, when, when you, you put, put in spacers, in spacers where, where are the spacers, spacers going? going? Um, basically, the spacers are, we basically just cut it out, Professor. Basically, like, we cut out the substrate. That makes sense. So, we, so you leave the chips, but you, you cut, cut out the out substrate? substrate? Yeah, so, yes. Hmm. Okay, okay. So, so we can, can, well, you can, can show, show me exactly what you do in the lab, lab after, after all, but, it, but, it, it's, but it's, it's uh, interesting um, to, to see, see this. this. Uh, so, uh, in, in principle, uh, you, you have 100% healing, healing uh, for, for your, your polyester, polyester, correct? correct? Uh, uh, but but but, but this, just, if, if you, you go, go to, 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 the, the, to the next, next slide, slide, you do you have ripping, ripping and, 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 and you know, you this, know this is a non-ASDM non heel strength, strength, but if you, if you go, go to your table, table it actually uh, shows quite, quite good, good results, results because you want the material, material to fully rip, rip right? Right. You want it to actually rupture. So in all cases, 
uh, uh, the, the fully, fully ripped, ripped uh, uh, with the spacer, spacer is actually, actually good. good. So, so uh, in, in principle, principle, when you get, get the, the, the actual materials, you're, you're going, going to use test 5 as, as, your, your, as your standard, standard um, optimized procedure. procedure. Yes, if we get it from the actual, um, yes, from Netflix per se. <laughs> Okay. okay, okay. Very, Very good. good. And, okay. okay. And, 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 and these, these are, are all going to be on, on, on extend polyester, polyester correct? correct? I believe. I'm not exactly sure, but yes, I believe it's right. Be okay, because your entire, entire process, process is, is, is optimized, optimized for polyester. polyester. Otherwise, Otherwise, you'd have, have to, to go, go back, back and do the model, model for polyimid. Right. right. Mm -hmm. so, so, okay. 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 Okay, okay, so, so that's, that's uh, I'll, I'll stop, stop now, now and let, let Professor, Professor Mead have, 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 have a chance, chance and, uh, and uh, if, if I have, have any more, I'll, I'll, I'll ask after. after. So, so I'm a, now, now, I thought I was, I was all set, set. Now, now I've now become, become confused. confused. So, so can you go, go back, back to the picture that shows what you're defining as ripped, teared, right there. Could you describe this? Perhaps, perhaps in terms, in terms of, of adhesive, adhesive or cohesive, cohesive failure? failure? Is, Is that, that possible? possible? Um, or, or, or something, something in, terms in terms of where, where you have, have failure? failure? Because, because when they, they say rip, tear, tear fully peeled, are those, are those things you've taken from the literature or are those things that you sort of made up? It, it might be good, good to use things that are more conventional. Adhesive, cohesive. Um, so, what's, what's the, difference the difference between fully peeled, peeled and tear? tear? Um, fully peeled. Again, I kind of I agree. I kind of just um, I wouldn't say I made it up, but I tried to at least describe what was happening. Um, fully peeled is where um, I was able to just basically separate it, Professor Mead, while um, tear. So there was no there adhesion. adhesion. Yes, there was. Oh. Okay. It was sticky, you know, it was sticky per se, but I could um, easily, like, there was no um, basically failure or, um, like, it looked the same. Like, I could just rip them apart without um, ripping maybe um, across the sheet or the endoxidant sheet. But it'd be useful, it'd be useful to, to think, think about, about it, maybe, maybe, maybe using, using the word, word that, that somebody, somebody might, might use for adhesion, adhesion I, think. I think. All right, but that wasn't really my question. question. So, so my, my question, question is, and, and I, still I still haven't really figured out how to ask, how to ask it, it, but in terms of what, what you're trying to accomplish, can you say anything based on your modeling as to what you feel would be, you have to think about your temperature, your pressure, you know, being consistent. What could you put together from all of the things that you've done to suggest what, what would be, be the best, best parameters, parameters and, and maybe, you know, what, what, what would, would you recommend, recommend people do as a methodology to get a good encapsulation? I think I could infer or suggest. Um, uh, is that what you want me to do, Professor Mead? Like, like exact specific I, I can barely hear you. Oh, sorry. Uh, do you want me to give, like, exact specific values or just, like, infer whether, um, like, you want to approximate? No. Oh, I, I, uh, at, at some, some point, point, you should, you should give, give exact specific values, values but, but at this, this point, point, not necessary. necessary. Um, I think what I could at least suggest, at least from the overall conclusions, um, I could say that um, in terms of processing, we want to maybe process it somewhere near that, uh, a slightly higher than your that crystal uh, peak melting point. And maybe we could, um, again, have better, um, basically equilibrate that pressure. We had a lot of problems in terms of like, um, that pressure variations we saw in our process settings. And so that's something um, we could have improved upon. I guess we could have improved upon that by adding maybe another bump event to further equilibrate your pressure. And again, I would say the addition of spacers if it would help. Or I, I'm not sure if that's answering the question. A little bit, but I, but I guess, guess I'm, I'm thinking, thinking how, how could you, you if, if you, you have, have all, all these models, models could, Could you, you give, give a, a recommendation, recommendation for, for what, what, what you might, might you can't, 
you want to make sure that it's consistent across all of this, or you don't want to go above a certain value. Something to inform people so that if, if you were to give this to a, a user, they could figure out what they should look for in, it in order to get a good encapsulation. I mean, you've done a lot of really nice work. So you have thermal analysis. How could they use that to make a good encapsulation? Because that'd be nice to get a new material in. What should they look to see? Same thing with your, your lamination. What could they look to see? You know, no, from, from your, your modeling. modeling. Because, because people, people may use different, different materials, materials if you develop the model. It'd be nice, nice to be able to use it for a new material. material. Right, so if I'm going to break something, I want to make, make sure, sure whatever material I use, I'd be well with certain, certain stress or, or below the failure or something. something. Or maybe, maybe I don't, don't want to put that much force back on the on the person. So I want to make sure that I'm below a certain value. So I don't know, service... Properties, I guess, for lack of a better term. All right, I think I've picked on you enough. <laughs> okay, okay, other questions, questions from uh, the, the audience, audience, the public. public. Wow. So, so Justin, Justin, you did a great job, right? right. 20, 30, 30 people here are on, on board, so you've really got a lot of support from the community. Um, if there are questions, contact Justin um, offline. You can see right here in the, in the participant list, you got his email there. Uh, so please feel free to uh, contact Justin, also shoot him a note uh, with any of the comments. Um, so does the community meet privately with uh, Justin? For a few minutes, or I'm sorry, you. your, your, your microphone, microphone is muted. Um, uh, do, uh, do we want, want to meet without Justin, Justin first, and then? Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I mean, if you want to give, give more questions, questions for Justin, Justin. and then uh, confer. Yeah. So, uh, ultimately, I have, um, I have them written down, written down here, and I'll send it to him. But as far as uh, work, work to be, be done, done or passing. passing. Uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll confer, confer uh, yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah. All, right, All right, so, so I do have to ask everybody, but the committee to hop off, off and Justin, I will send you a text, text message uh, when, when you should hop, hop back, back on. on. Okay, okay, so uh, just, just a few, few minutes. minutes. All right, All right thank, thank you, you. And, and thank you everybody for coming, coming again. again. Thank, thank you. you.